okay so these are the study designs that's what we are talking about today study designs so traditional review is simply you combine previously published papers together and you write a paper out of it and traditional review is also known as narrative review it has three names i want everyone to know these names traditional review is also known as narrative review and it is also known as literature review all the all of these are literature reviews but the term literature review normally is used with traditional review now the traditional review is written by combining so many papers together and now if i give all of you a topic same topic to write a traditional review all of you will produce a traditional review but all of you will probably come up with different results and all of you if you don't come up with different results your paper will be exactly di way different and there will be new things in each one each one's everyone's paper this is the problem with traditional review that if everyone is given the same topic everyone can produce a different paper but a systematic review is different if all of you write a systematic review you all will get the same results and this is the purpose of creating a systematic review to create such a methodology that can be repeatable or replicable because we are calling it systematic review because we are creating a system we are creating a machine let's say you are creating a machine everyone gets the same results systematic review is like a machine systematic review is like a system systematic review produces a methodology that is repeatable that anyone who does that gets the exact same result if you do the systematic review if you see a systematic review let me repeat again if you see a systematic review today after 100 years somebody follows the same methodology will get the exact same results will get the exact same that's what systematic this is what systematic i'm not talking about scoping review on purpose right now although i have a youtube video on this you can watch it you will get a little bit of idea what scoping review is so systematic review is replicable you create a system you create a machine and you follow certain guidelines only then you can create a machine you follow prisma checklist prisma stands for preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta -analysis. preferred p for preferred r for reporting i for items s for systematic reviews m for meta a for analysis so prisma checklist is used to write a systematic review you follow prisma checklist points and once you follow it your paper will automatically become a system but here you don't need any checklist no check in traditional review. because you are not creating a system you're just writing a paper like an essay method and results section are optional in traditional review method and results section are optional here method and results are mandatory compulsory or a must requirement method and results are must you cannot have a systematic review without method and results. the real thing in a systematic review is actually a method the real thing in a systematic review is method the real thing in a traditional review is discussion then whatever studies you have included you check the quality of each study yes that's what we talked about in the beginning today you check the quality of the studies once you check the quality you keep the strong studies you remove the weak studies because systematic review is only as good as the studies it contains remember this line this is the most common famous line to recognize a systematic review the systematic review is only as good as the studies it contains if it has weaker studies it's not a systematic review it's a bad systematic systematic review should have good studies that's why we check quality here we don't check quality Traditional review is broad. We search a broad topic. We write a paper on a broad topic. We usually don't have a research question. Our topic is a research question. But here we have a narrow topic and we answer a research question. Now, what is the difference? Hold on one more. We have a robust inclusion exclusion criteria here. And inclusion exclusion criteria is optional. That what kind of studies we will keep, what kind of studies we will not keep. So Tohin has a question. Case reports, can they be written in the same format? No. I'll talk about that. If you stay, I'll talk about case reports. Just because of you, I know you you asked this question to me. So this is a good time we can discuss that. Scoping reviews. Now, what is a scoping review, guys? Just the name suggests scoping. Scoping means you are just checking the scope of a study, of a topic. That how much is written? How much is written? How much is written about this topic? Remember, in narrative review, we don't care how much is written. You are just creating like an essay. Whatever you find, you can write an essay. In systematic review, you have a narrow topic and you create a question and you write it down. But here, it's somewhere in between a traditional review and a systematic review. How much is written? You just want to check how much is written. You include all possible studies that were published in last five years. Here, you may not include all possible studies of our topic because you have a strict question. Here, you don't necessarily have a strict question. You just explore what is available so you will have a broad topic like traditional review 
not a narrow question a broad topic like a traditional review narrow is systematic review only this is broad this is broad and you follow prisma checklist now you again work it like a system you make it like a system you create it like a system you build it like a system so prisma of scoping review sr prisma sr there's a checklist known as prisma sr so prisma of scoping reviews prisma checklist for scoping reviews you use that you follow the guidelines inclusion exclusion criteria will be there the only thing that will not be there is the quality we do not want to deliberately check the quality of the paper so if your paper does not have the quality check or you include weaker studies then your paper actually is a scoping review now remember if you have a narrow research question and you did not check the quality then this is nowhere it's not even a scoping review it's not even a systematic review you have messed up your study design is wrong so if you are planning not to check quality then the paper, the topic should be broad either a traditional review or a systematic review but if you have followed prisma checklist of scoping reviews and you don't check quality and you have broad paper that broad topic then it's a scoping review and scoping review is a precursor to systematic review then after you are done with this then you can narrow that topic down further and you can write a systematic review because scoping review has given you an idea that there is enough paper or there is enough literature available on this topic so yes we can create a research question and we can write a system so these are the three kinds of review articles that you should know you definitely should know easiest one to write is this second easiest is this and the most difficult one is this so i'll say with difficulty one two three third one is the toughest one and it gives you the most reward as well because in terms of the respect and reputation systematic review will give you a lot of reputation in the eyes of residency directors in the eyes of scientists in the eyes of job employers even scoping review is not a joke either traditional review it will be like oh very good amazing you have a great article that's amazing but here they will say oh wow unbelievable you have a systematic review this will be the attitude that's wonderful you have a publication amazing you're an amazing student but here's a wow how can a young student like you do a systematic review that's why systematic review is a lot of power, a lot a uh, lot powerful than than uh, these two now sec another commonly asked question sir can i write a systematic so should i write a systematic review or should i write a traditional review i have an exam i have step 2 ck left so i have step 1 left i have my oet left what do i do i'm concerned I don't have time to write a systematic review. Remember guys, if you are in that kind of situation then go with a traditional review. If you have an exam coming up, you have so many responsibilities and you are occupied, go with traditional review and right after you finish your traditional review start working on a systematic review as a second paper. So yes, you still can write a traditional review and you should if you don't have time. If you have time, go with a systematic review. If you don't have time, write a traditional review and second paper write a systematic review. after that because in the end what matters is the publication i don't want anyone to be left without a publication publication matters the most some people just because of running after systematic review they could not publish their paper on time i don't want that to happen so if you are in a dilemma if you are in that kind of situation if you are in that kind of challenge if you are in that kind of trouble if you are in that kind of confusion then write a traditional review a short traditional review 5 to 6 pages finish it and just have it published publication versus no publication publication matter publication versus no publication publication matter so don't be among those who run after systematic review and in the end don't publish anything i hope this is very clear